center project. Well, good. We're sorry we missed yeah. you last time and are glad you could come back. It's all right. Uh, thank you for giving us time on your agenda today. Um, uh, first off, when are we going to start? It'll be soon, but I can't be more specific than that. Our contractor is going to be Don Linger. They are still waiting on some bids to come in, and we can't finalize the IRBs <coughs> until we have a contract with him. So um, I'm hoping it'll be sometime in June. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but um, we, there are too many things in flux to give you a date now. Um, when, um, when Jim Strawn and I started this process, our goal was to replace what we lost when Countryside Lanes uh, was closed. But we're going to end up with a lot more than that. Um, the best thing we did was partner with Frank and Kathy DeSocio out of Wichita. Um, this is all they've done for, for their careers. Uh, they know this business inside and out, and we're going to really benefit from their expertise. Um, to give you some background on them, this will be the third bowling alley that they've built from the ground up. The first one was North Rock Lanes. Uh, when they built that, uh, Rock Road was a two-lane road, and they didn't have a building within 100 yards in any direction from, from their uh, bowling alley. Um, and that building was very similar to Countryside Lanes. Uh, the next one they built was the alley, and that was completed about seven years ago. It was a completely different approach. Not only was it a bowling alley, it had go-karts, uh, a nice bar, um, and an arcade area. Um, after they finished that project, um, some people they know from Louisiana wanted to do the same thing near Baton Rouge. They came up to Wichita, saw what was there, and made some improvements to it. Uh, Frank wanted us to see what had been done in Louisiana, so a group of us went down to look at that. And we have made improvements on what they have done. So the result is that uh, we're going to have um, a facility that is the absolute state of the art for right now. There won't be another city our size in the country that will have anything nicer than what we're going to have. Um, so the, uh, the screen shows the uh, the rendering of the building. Um, in terms of size, it's 43,000 square feet, but it's going to appear as big as the Kohl's store is. Uh, Kohl's is, I think, 55,000, but we're going to have the same height of the sidewall. Uh, it, it's going to be a huge building when people are walking into it. Um, the, the windows on the, uh, it would be the east side and the north side, are where the bar is going to be, and we are going to have some outdoor seating there. The, the afternoon sun will be behind the building, so that area will be shaded. Um, as far as, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, this is what the interior will look like when you walk in. Um, two things of, of interest. One, we're gonna have a lot of brick walls. We're trying to get kind of an abandoned factory feel. And then we're also going to have a number of glass garage doors, many of which are movable, uh, depending on what the customer wants. So you can see those on the screen as well. Um, where the signage says the alley, we're actually going to have a photograph of an alley in Hutchinson. Um, hmm. We want one that's well known. I think the leading alley now is between the Fox Theater and the Wiley Building. Uh, but we're going to have a number of photographs of Hutchinson that will be on the um, signage that's used in the building. Um, we're not going to have steps anywhere. It, it's a completely flush floor. Um, and then we're going to have uh, an acre to the south of the building that, that we will own uh, for future attractions. Um, we don't know what it will be, and we don't know when we'll do it, but um, the choices we have are either go-karts or miniature golf, uh, at least as of now. Um, as far as the, the bowling itself, we're going to have 20 lanes in a row, uh, just a conventional bowling alley. Then we're going to have six lanes in a completely separate area that is a little more secluded. 
Uh, we call that the boutique lanes. Um, what I'm excited about there is, is that's a, uh, a nicer area. It has nicer furniture. We're going to be buying some uh, brand new furniture from AMF that is designed specifically for boutique areas. Uh, it will be able to be, you can arrange it so that the seating faces each other or you can <coughs> flip them around and you can have, in essence, one huge couch. Um, the boutique area will be available during the week for um, walk-in bowling and then um, in periods of high demand uh, you'll be able to reserve that uh, either a few lanes or all the lanes and we're going to have a series of those garage doors in that area so that if, if you want to be open uh, to the noise and the hubbub you can or you can close it off. And we'll even have a, a bar set up in there that we only man based on uh, the needs of the customers. But it's going to be a very nice area and for parties. Um, so it, it'll address uh, something that most bowling alleys, the old style, uh, can't, can't address. Um, I brought, uh, I wanted you to see our, our rental shoes. They are, they are. I don't know that we can tell how they operate. Could you put them on for me? <laughs> These are the best looking rental shoes you'll ever see. Um, they're um, it's kind of interesting. We're going to have 300 pair. Uh, the biggest size will be 15. Um, now for the, for the older people, we're going to have laces. For the young kids, we'll have Velcro flaps. Um, they're, they're unisex uh, on, the, on the heel. It, it shows what the size is for uh, a man and a woman. And then it's smooth sole on both shoes, so it works for either a right-handed or left-handed person. Um, it has, um, the, the shoes have special stitching that glow in the dark. And so when we have our, our <laughs> black light events, uh, the, the shoes will really stand out. You've thought of everything, Brad. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to have, uh, we're completely set up to handle handicapped people. Um, we're going to have ramps that they can use to position the ball. Um, for youth, we're going to have uh, ramps, but we call them dragons because they're they're green plastic and look like a dragon. Um, so you can never be uh, too young to bowl using those a as an aid. Um, all the lanes will have lane bumpers that can that rise up uh, for younger bowlers so that their ball stays on course. And those bumpers can be cycled based on the order, the sequence of the bowler. So if, if you're bowling with your kids and they want the bumpers and obviously the adults don't, then uh, when it's the kids' turn, the bumpers will come up and then they'll go back down. Um, cool. We're going to have uh, bowling balls with handles for those <coughs> people who have arthritis and maybe they, they either can't use a conventional ball or their fingers won't fit in the, in the holes uh, so that they can bowl. Um, Brad, the, I think we're all stumped on how that handle's yeah, going to bounce well, down the alley. It's, it, it's a handle that collapses as you release the ball. Oh, okay. Oh. That's pretty cool. Well, we're just not as high tech in the well, <laughs> I wasn't, knowledgeable. I wasn't either until about six months ago. Um, now, one thing that is going to be different during periods of high demand, we're going to uh, rent these lanes by the hour rather than by the game. Uh, that will be different than how it was done in the past. But the advantage of that is we anticipate a lot of demand on weekends, and we can give people a set time that they can plan on that they know they'll, they'll get that, that lane. Uh, but that will be a change from what we've done in the past at Countryside. And then you'll have pagers that will tell you when your lane is available. Um, I like restaurants. Next to the... Um, the boutique area is a thousand square foot meeting room that is available to anyone that, that can use something like that. Um, in Wichita at the alley, the, uh, the Walmart managers meet once a month 
for a business meeting and lunch, and then they bowl. And we, we think there'll be a lot of demand for that room for both business groups, uh, birthday parties, um, things like that. Um, we're going to have a pro shop, and it will be operated by grandchildren of Lowell Pig. And for the bowlers in our community, Lowell ran yeah. countryside lanes for a long time. Um, another change we're making, uh, we're going to have leagues, um, uh, particularly during Monday through Thursday. But they're not going to be these marathon leagues that start in September and go until May. Um, that's not to say we won't have a few like that, but a lot of them will be much shorter in duration. And we're going to make a real effort to include different segments of our town with a theme for a particular league. We'll have coffee leagues in the morning. We'll have senior leagues in the, in the daytime. We hope to have church leagues, uh, co-op leagues. Um, in Emporia, uh, the DeSocio started a league uh, during the winter when the farmers have a lot of free time. Um, the first night they had league there, they ran out of beer, which <laughs> tells you something about um, the, the I think demand. that's a great idea, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the smartest thing you said today so far, Brad. Uh, the, the other thing that, that I'm excited about, in Wichita, they have started bowling late at night on a weekday for WSU students. Uh, the first night, they had 200 students show up. Uh, we want to try to do the same thing for Hutch Juco. Uh, so um, here's our, our bar. Um, it's going to seat uh, 96 people. Now, Carl seats about 125, so that'll give you a mm -hmm. feel for it. Um, and two-thirds of our sales will be from food. Um, so we're, while we serve alcohol, we, we do not want a, a bar feel to it. The, the liquor bottles will be below the counter. Um, we're going to have a number of TVs, and what what I think will be something new to Hutchinson, we're going to have contracts with Direct TV, so that we can basically show any football or basketball game that's being shown anywhere in the country on the Direct TV network. Cool. Um, so if, if somebody comes in and they want to watch the Buffalo Bills, um, we'll be able to put one TV on that game. Uh, so we can accommodate a lot of, of uh, fans that, um, and you can get that same thing at home, but it, it's different when you can get it in a, in a public area. Um, we are serving exclusively Budweiser products. I, I mentioned to, to Bob that we had a contract, that the, that the bowling association had a contract with Budweiser, and he said, no, that's not right. Budweiser is prohibited legally from contracting for exclusivity, but Budweiser does a lot of thing for the, a lot of things for the bowling industry, and so it's just an understood arrangement. Um, the DeSocios have a food and beverage manager who runs all their facilities. He used to be a trainer at P.F. Chang. He's he knows what he's doing with, with uh, training kitchen personnel and, and running those. Uh, we'll have good food. Uh, what what the Alley in Wichita is particularly known for is their pizza. Uh, Frank is Italian. He grew up on the East Coast but went to WSU for school. Um, he came up with a uh, recipe that he liked, and he called a, uh, a dough uh, provider that makes the ingredients for dough. And uh, he wanted to buy specifically from them. And they said, well, we send trucks to Doskasol and Hutchinson all the time. We'll just direct ship to you using our own trucks. Um, on a Super Bowl Sunday in Wichita, the alley will have sales of 250 carryout orders for their, for their biggest pizza. So when you think of, of all the places you can go to Wichita to buy pizza, and that's where people want to go. So I think people will be happy with the food. Um, as far as employment, we're going to have a total of about 60 employees, wow. um, of which 30 would be on staff during our, our peak hours. Um, of those, roughly 12 will be full-time, the rest will be part-time. 
Um, most of those part-time jobs will probably be the first job for that individual. It'll be mainly high school kids and JUCO kids. Um, it's a perfect job for them because our busiest hours are when school is not in session. Uh, so it, it fits in very well. Um, we will do 75% of our business from Friday afternoon through Sunday evening. Um, mm. So, uh, and uh, summers will be very busy for us. Our, our weakest times will be uh, in the fall on Friday nights with high school football. Um, we're going to have one full-time employee whose only job is to schedule special events in the building. That's everything from birthday parties, uh, corporate outings, uh, Christmas parties. Um, the alley in Wichita has increased its number of Christmas parties every year for the past five years. Um, we have found that once employers can take their employees and spouses, and of course the spouses normally don't know the other employees, you get them in that kind of a setting and everybody has more fun and it, many times it's more affordable than what they were doing. Um, we will have a website that uh, moms can go on the website and book their birthday party whenever they want. Uh, it didn't used to be that way at the alley, but they had so many calls from moms after 10 o'clock at night who had finally gotten through their day and now they were thinking about their child's birthday party that we want to make it easy for them. In, uh, in, at the bowling alley in Baton Rouge, they were booked out four months in advance on birthday parties. So we think that will be something that um, will be in demand here. At, at a birthday party, when your party arrive, when your party group arrives, uh, we'll have an employee assigned to that group for the entire duration of the party. So there will be somebody there to take care of anything that needs to be done. Uh, so the, the parents can just enjoy the party instead of work the party. Um, at the alley this spring, they had 3,000 students come in for end of school events. Mm -hmm. um, they, had, yeah. um, they had one high school that booked their prom around when they could have the after prom at the alley. Uh, so we're going to have this individual working all of these aspects. Um, we're building uh, something that we think will draw from more than 100 miles away. Uh, Baton Rouge was drawing from 100 miles out, and that's more of an urban area where people are less willing to drive long distances. The more rural you get, the more willing people are to travel because they just don't have many options mm -hmm. to choose from. Um, so we hope that person will be uh, very busy doing that. Um, the next thing, here's, here's an overhead view um, <coughs> that shows the layout and the, the dark area in the corner is our um, laser tag area and our um, spin zone bumper cars and I'll talk about those in a minute. But then around that will be our arcade. Um, if you had asked any of our investors a year ago if they wanted to be in the coin-operated amusement machine industry, we would have said no. That's not something we want to do. But this arcade is, is one of the ways that these businesses make sense. Um, we're going to have somewhere between, I think, 30 and 40 <coughs> arcade games, and they're designed basically for kids 12 and under. Now, you'll get a smattering of people older than that, but um, it, the main emphasis is kids. There's a grandmother in Wichita who has taken her grandkids in three times to go bowling, and each time they never made it out of the arcade area. Those grandkids have yet to bowl. Um, we're going to have all our arcade games selected by a consultant. Um, this is all he does, is consult with... Uh, family entertainment centers on which arcade games are in demand. Um, we will have a redemption area where you can accumulate points from using the arcade and then you exchange those points for a, a toy. 
and we'll have a rotation of those toys so that people always have something new to choose from. Um, most of the arcades around the country use uh, paper tickets, and you've seen them, they come streaming out of those machines. And that's part of the fun for the kids as they see what they just won. But we're going to go a different direction. We're going to use a plastic card. Um, you'll insert money in a machine. A card will come out with the equivalent value on that card. And as you use the card to play the games, the points that you win will go on that card. So when you go to the redemption area, you can tell the employee which toy you want. He'll just use a gun, he'll shoot the toy, he'll hit your card, and it takes the points off and it, it makes it very simple. And we're not trying to count those tickets and throw away the tickets, it's a cleaner deal. What we heard from Louisiana was that the kids love the cards because it, it becomes their credit card. And um, it makes them feel like they're an adult. Um, those cards can be used anywhere within the building. You can use them to buy food and beverages and bowl, and it, it's, a, it's an all-in-one deal. Um, let's go to the laser tag, um, and if, if we could show that film footage on uh, laser tag. Well, okay, here it is. Just a short... <laughs> Okay, I think most of us know what laser tag is, but I've never actually done it, and I thought people would enjoy seeing that. The laser tag area is going to be 2,200 square feet, but it's going to have a play structure in the middle of it with a series of ramps so that the actual area that you can run around in and hide is much bigger than just the 2,200 square feet. Um, there are, I think, two laser tag areas in Wichita, and neither one of them are in a building that has bowling. Um, so we're we're very fortunate to have one at all, let alone where you can do other things as well. Um, it's always in black light, and which that screen was. And we have a choice of three themes, uh, either cyber or earth or jungle. We asked them if we could have something done about a salt mine theme. Um, but they saw us coming and the price was too high, so we're, we're going to go with one that we have. Um, the, the play structure is going to be a series of ramps, and I asked Kathy, why are we using ramps instead of stairs? And she said, well, you're much less likely to fall down if you're on a ramp than if you're climbing stairs, particularly in the dark. And if you do fall down, you're not going to get hurt nearly as bad if you fall on a flat surface than on a surface with edges. Um, but then I think the star attraction of what we're going to have is the spin zone bumper cars. And let's run that footage now. These are these are brand new. They've only been out a year and a half, two years. Uh, we'll be the first place in the state of Kansas to have these. Um, they had them in, uh, in Louisiana, and we saw them there. It's a, think of it as a hovercraft. These, these float on air. They blow air down, and so you have no friction. That allows you to spin around. Uh, most bumper cars that you'll see run on wheels. Um, and there's no spinning involved, it's just trying to bump into each other. These, you have to hit the other player in a certain location. You have to hit them on their sides to make them spin. If you hit them in the front or back, nothing happens. Um, we're going to, but each one of these, we're going to have eight of these. Um, each one will have a second seat, a buddy seat, for kids that are too short or too small to ride them themselves. 
and I think our height limitation is going to be around 45 inches. So if you're not big enough to get on by yourself, you can ride with an adult. Um, and even the littlest kids can get on. That There's a seat belt. It's, it's very safe. But we think these are going to be a big attraction. Um, in Louisiana, they initially put the buddy seat on just two of them. Uh, the result was they had to have two waiting lines. One if you were going to have two on one and then the other line. Here we'll just have one waiting line that everybody gets in at the same time. So that's an overview of, of uh, what we're doing. Um, the IRBs that you have assisted us with have been extremely helpful to us in making this happen. Um, businesses like this are very seldom located in a town of our size. Um, so we are really excited about what we're going to offer the, the town. Um, we'll be able to have uh, charity fundraisers. We can handle all the high school bowling. Um, we're going to accommodate a lot of social gatherings that, that need a place to go. I asked a friend of mine who has a high school student, what does your son do on Friday nights? And he said he goes to Applebee's for the half price appetizers. And that's a nice place to go. I'm, I'm glad we have that. But it, it shows you how badly we need an alternative, mm -hmm. uh, something mm -hmm. else. Um, we're going to be open, I think, 365 days a year. The only day we might close is the 4th of July. And I think with the, with the changes we've made in fireworks, um, we'll probably stay open on that day, too, because there aren't that many options for fireworks now. So um, I know people are, are anxious. They want to get it open. We do, too. But I want to give this presentation mm -hmm. today to assure people that we're working hard on this, and um, it, it's going to be worth the wait. So uh, It looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I think we're all really anxious to, yeah. to see yeah. it actually be there, and we can, can go. and. Mm -hmm. Bob wants to be, I think, first on the hovercraft. He may need to be in a buddy seat. But. Actually, I want, I want go-karts. Uh, go-karts are cool. Let's do that. Well, I, I hope we can do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Great job. That's great. Wonderful. Can't wait. <laughs>